I am Daniel Lucas, and welcome to Book 101. Book 101 is all about the books that I read for the last 40 years, and today I have my special guest, no other than Miss Huckle Perry Rawr. Welcome to Book 101, Miss Huckle. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yes, and can you please introduce yourself? My name is Huckleberry Rar, though Huckle works just fine. Um, I am, I've written a lot of books. I have a couple, which I'm not going to divulge. I teach math at a university in Wisconsin, and I have a pen name because I don't want my students finding my other books. But under YA, I have six books. The last one's coming out this summer. And then once those come out, I'm going to switch to a new series. Oh, my goodness. Sounds interesting, Miss Huckle. So what is the difference of being writing a novel and teaching students? Well... I would say the big difference is I have more control over the characters, but anyone who writes knows you only have so much control over your characters. You start writing and then the characters kind of do what they want, but I think that's fun also. I, there are three main types of writers. There are the ones who plan everything out, the ones who are pantsers right by the seat of their pants and the ones that are somewhere in between the planters who kind of plan and write some, and then also a bit by the seat of their pants. Wolf healer. Um, I knew the main character would go to Florida. Big issues would happen there and she would come home. And that's literally what I thought when I was writing the book. Um, I had never really written before, and I thought, okay, I want her to get to Florida. And then in the back of my mind, I thought, uh, slow down, you write too fast, because I write really fast, but I also write to the key points really fast. And so I kept on thinking, I need to add more to develop this character before the big reveal happens. But I didn't have any other plot points decided I just was like okay she needs to get to Florida and then when it happens I need to discuss what the fallout is and that's how I wrote the second book Epsilon as well um future books I planned a little bit more I maybe had a quarter page of notes written out but being dyslexic doing too much planning doesn't work well with me so Whenever I plan out too much, by the time I get to the end of my plans, they're wildly off from where I actually am. Are you in between the gardener and architect? Yeah. Oh, sounds interesting. Being a mathematician, is it in your writing? Um, I think the place where the math appears is I'm very analytical about my characters like I feel I understand characters really well and so when I'm reading another book I know characters and to me they're very logical so you're saying that you are more straightforward in your writing I I don't know if I'm more straightforward in my writing but my understanding of characters that's where I was um and so when I read other people's books I beta read a lot Um, I help friends and other authors and I always know when people kind of go off the rail when they write a character and they want their character to do something and it's out of line with how they've set up their character because to me that's really logical like you've set up this character and your character wouldn't do that and and so I'll often say to them with the way you've set up your character be wary and so that's usually where I'm pretty good. What age uh, do you realize that you are good in writing? Um, That took longer. I like telling stories and I wrote my first book and then I started going to this writer's group. They, you have to be really careful. There are amazing, amazing people. Um, 
And there were some people in this writer's group who were not amazing. I met this author, A.R. Grimes. She is fantastic. Um, who I'm dyslexic, I should say that. So I sometimes get words mixed up or my grammar isn't the best, but my storytelling is good. And the writer's group wasn't always forgiving of my dyslexia. She is excellent at line editing and copy proofreading and stuff. And she saw past that and was like, you're an amazing storyteller. Don't let anyone say anything else. I also found an amazing, amazing editor, um, Wesley Ismarek. Oh, I just killed her, their last name. Um, same thing. They saw past my dyslexia to my storytelling and were like, you need to write more. You need to tell more stories. It's not the grammar. It's the storytelling, which makes an author. And between the two of them, uh, Wes and A.R. Grimes, they helped me see that being an author, being a writer is the stories you tell. It's the ability to craft a story. And like, I tend to put twists and turns in my stories and kind of leave readers, even my simple stories, I, I tend to try to give something more. And they both really appreciate that and push me to write more. So under my pen name, the reason I have the pen name is I write romance, which I don't want my students to read. Um, and I add a lot of humor and a lot of a lot of things like that in there. And I think that's really important. Very well said. So what behind your name? My name, Huckleberry Rar? Yes. Well, I have lesbian mothers who thought Huckleberry was a really awesome name. And I married a man whose last name is Rar. Oh, <laughs> wow. If you describe the writing of uh, Wes and Grimes, what is it? If I describe their writings? Yes. Uh, Wes writes romance, uh, mostly bioawakening romance, which is fabulous. They write under a pen name, Parker Love, and their books are fantastic. And A.R. Grimes, their book that's out right now, um, Wielding Snare, is one of, is a favorite of mine. It doesn't get a lot of um, reads because I don't know why, but they are both excellent, excellent writers. I was just going to say they're amazing writers who I love reading their stories because I get lost in their writing. So let's talk about your debut novel, Wolf Healer. What behind the title of your debut? So when I started writing this story, I wanted a book about... Um, I wanted it to be YA because I wanted it to be for my kids. I have two sons and I wanted a story that was gritty and had a lot of story behind it. I didn't want the romance because I know a lot of YA has a lot of romance and they didn't want that. I wanted something that had a lot of good story without worrying about who was falling in love with whom. And then I liked the idea of this young woman who knew her place in the world. She's smart. She has like all her ducks in a row. Um, and then she goes to Florida and her whole life crumbles. Like everything she thought she knew when she comes back is no longer the way it is. Um, I also wanted her world to be very queer centric. I didn't want that to be the point of the story because that's not what my kid's life is. Like I said, I have lesbian moms and my son is pan. Um, and so they were just brought and like, he has lots of friends who are trans or gay or lesbian. And so he's been brought up in this world where just the rainbow is the backdrop. And so that's what I wanted represented in the story. So there's a trans character and a gay character, straight characters, there's everything. Um, and I, that's not the point of the story, it's just the backdrop, as is life. Um, so the pack is totally accepting of that. 
that is not an issue in this book. But I wanted, just like everything else in the world, so, Jade to come back from Florida with a challenge that her parents would see as a new spin on how accepting can our parents be. So I, I liked that idea where parents always have a new challenge of kids finding things their parents have a hard time accepting. Now I know in, I, I listened to the last podcast where you guys talked about my book and one of the topics was her life seemed simplistic. The only challenge was, can I go to Florida? And it, and it's funny, I talked to my son about this and he's like, Gen Z likes simple ex uh, escapism. And, and that was kind of one of the ideas that I wanted to add in. I, there are a few other challenges in Jade's life um, that are thrown in there. But the idea of the YA book being an escapism world was something I wanted. You can come home, you can read it, you can escape and not have, some books are really heavy and get you very stressed out while you're reading. And I wanted it to be a book where you could just relax while you read. There are bigger challenges when you get into the remaining five books. And my son's best friend reads them as soon as they get out. And it's one of his favorite series. The J. Stone Chronicles book one, Wolf Healer. How did you craft it? How I crafted it? By luck. <laughs> I didn't know <laughs> what I was doing. <laughs> you just in right in right. Oh, this is it. Wolf Healer. <laughs> this, by the way, starting today, this is just by complete chance. The third one. So the first one is Wolf Healer. The second one is Epsilon. The third one is Alphas. Starting today, which is May 28th, um, for the next week, the third one is on sale. It's, they're normally, wow. the ebooks are normally $4.99. The third one is on sale for 99 cents for, until like June 2nd or June 4th, whatever, the next week. So I don't yes. know how quickly these go on air, but for the next week, it's on sale. And before we get on, I'm, uh, I want to uh, shout out to the people listening in Germany. Danke schön, Germany, for supporting this podcast in uh, Hess. I get 23%, Bavaria, 19%, Rayland Plus at 16%, North, North Rhine, West Pala. 15%, Land Berlin at 8%, Lower Saxony at 4%, Brad and Wurttemberg region at 2%, Hamburg at 2%, Brad and Wurttemberg 2%, Saxony 2%, Bad and Wurttemberg 2%, Schleswig Holstein at 1%, Turigia at the same, Free and Hansenic City of Hansburg. Uh, Saarland, uh, Mackenberg, Varponman, Saxony, Ahalt, Bradenburg, and last but not the least, Bremen. Thank you so much. Oh, danke schön, Germany, for supporting this podcast. Back about Germany. Yes. When I was finding names for the places and like names of different people. A lot of time I tapped into German names because Wisconsin has its roots in Germany. Oh, wow. So like the name of the town is Stolzberg, which has its roots in the German language. And that happens a lot through the book. So if people from Germany who are English speakers read the book, they'll recognize the words and know what's going on more so than other just pure English speakers because the roots of my words are German uh, or so Spanish these, but, they yeah. speak, but they speak German or Spanish I know more Spanish than German I just liked the sound of the German words I do want to learn German Okay, that'd be awesome. So let's shout out also to the people listening in Spain because last time I didn't complete it. <laughs> so people in Spain, thank you so much for supporting this podcast. In Andalusia, I get 49%. Madrid, 14%. Catalonia, 
Sen, Valencia, Navarre, Galicia, Balearic Island, Gesell de Leon, Basque Country, Principality of Austria, Murcia, Aragon, Canary Island, and last but not the least, Cantabria. Thank you so much for supporting this podcast because this podcast is created and power writers all over the world like Miss Huckle Derry Rar. So, Miss Huckle, what is the best highlight of Wolf Hiller? The best highlight? I would say the best thing that people really like is the fact that the wolves, and a lot of times wolves historically are portrayed as being very aggressive and angry and fighting for rank i portray the wolves as being a family unit that doesn't mean that there isn't fighting and there isn't that angry there isn't any violence in the book there is it's explained more in book two but i really do try to like her jade and her friends are very caring and throughout the book all of the books the wolves are portrayed as being very caring and you can tell how much everybody cares for each other and so it's when you read it it's like you're part of the family you're part of just this close-knit group and so reading the books are like coming home yes so what are your preparation in writing this series um a lot of the preparation reading about wolves and just figuring out what I wanted to do with each of the characters. I've read a lot of wolf books, so I knew what I wanted to add in. And then deciding what each book, Jade, the main character, gets something. And then trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And so for each book, something happens. And so it's like... How, and then my son at one point is like, if you do too much to her, she's going to need major therapy. You have to stop. So there was that. <laughs> what do you think would be the flaws of Wolf Healer? What do I think the flaws are of Wolf Healer? Well, it was the first book I ever wrote. So I know that my writing has gotten tighter and cleaner. And sometimes I go back, like in these type of things, I'll read the first chapter or two. And I know that probably I could have written it better. So I know one of the things that a lot of people said at the beginning, the first, I don't know, six to eight chapters, I'm building up who Jade is because I have to establish her as smart. She's klutzy. She's not perfect. She stays klutzy throughout the series, which is fun. She's teased for falling on her butt a lot. Um, And I probably could have done it with more action, more, there is action, but probably more, you know, things happening. And that was always the biggest complaint I ever got from beta readers is can't you move the big reveal sooner? And I'm like, I can't because I need to establish who she is first. And if I were to rewrite Wolf Healer today, I might restructure the book because I know more about writing books. I think the book is good. It has good reviews, um, but it was my first book. And so the biggest complaint I usually get is it starts off a bit slow. I don't mind slow books, but that's usually the one thing I hear. If you describe your writing, what is it? I tend to write stories that are quirky and fun and funny and I don't tend to drag on I don't write I don't write more than I need to write to get to the point Mm, yes and according to Catherine the Graham a perfect YA story for readers looking for a classic shifter themes combined with something deeper so do you think Wolf Healer will be a classic novel and that is amazing to hear. Catherine D. Graham is an amazing author. So getting a compliment from her is lovely to hear. Definitely. It's something else. Rice less. Yes. And if you want to revise the book itself, which part of the book you want to revise? 
Honestly, I can't see revising it because that is like probably my Achilles heel. I look forward. I don't tend to look back. So I feel books, it's the last beta reader is reading it right now. And once I get it from her, probably in the next week, it's it's done. Book six is, book six is done. I'm writing a Christmas novella, which will be done in the next week. I have a short story that's going in a compilation. And then Jade, the main character, has a younger sister that you meet in book two. I might write a trilogy for her, but then I'm writing a Phoenix shifter story that I have two books written for. I would say, so my thing is, I started writing in 2019, in July, July 29th of 2019, I picked up my computer and thought, how hard would it be to write a book? Since then, I've written over 30 books. Oh, wow. (laughs) And probably 20 of them are published. So I am one of those people who just keeps moving forward. That's my thing. I am not a procrastinator. I work hard. I, I'm, I'm a doer. What are your short-term and long-term goals in writing? So my short-term goals are, I want my, well, I want to get the Jade series done, both the six books, the novella done, um, and I want to get the third book of this Phoenix series written. My son, who is about, it, it, he loves D&D. And he created a storyline for a book he wants me to write where he's like DMing the book. So he's created the characters and he's created like the basic idea. And I'm writing the story. I've written two chapters of this book. And so he's DMing a book for me to write in a D&D world type thing so that's also kind of on the back burner so my short term is to just get these different books long term it would be really nice if in the next year or two I got to the point where I could write full time Um, I love teaching I I love being in the classroom I love being in front of students I love working with them Um, but I really like writing and I love I just like working with writers, like when I get to beta read a book and help somebody get better. I think that's really fun. But I spend a lot of my time doing <laughs> math and grading and doing all those parts as well. So I don't know. Yes, and congratulations because Wolf Healer is on the top 181 in teen and young adult LGBTQ fiction. It was in the top 100 yesterday. It pops. If you oh, give yes. it, yeah, it, it's it's in the top 100 a few times a week. It, it's it's a fickle little number, that number you're looking at. Ah, uh, okay. And congratulations. What else you can say about Wolf Hiller? Um, I think it's a book that everyone should read. And if I knew, you know, in your last podcast, um, you guys talked about it getting onto like Netflix or Hulu. And if I knew how to do that, I even know who I would want cast as some of the characters. Oh, wow. So can you give us an example for cast? So I don't have a lot of them, but not not the main character, Jade. I don't know who I'd cast for her, but one of her best friends um, is named Bevan. That's um, a trans character. And I would love Elliot Page to play him. And then one of another character is... um, this character named Jose and I think Elliot Fletcher would be a great uh, actor for him and I think it's hilarious that they're both named Elliot Um, it's not the name but they both look like how I imagine the characters look Um, and I think they would be they would both be excellent actors for those two those are the only two I've really thought about why did you chosen Wolf as your main character in the uh, Animal Kingdom I think it's because it's the most common shifter but there are other shifters in the book. Originally, I didn't tell people that, but there's enough covers out there now on Amazon that you can see other animals on covers. So that secret is bit, that secret's out. 
So there are other animals besides just wolves out there. Okay, so before we go on, I'm inviting you to listen to my other podcast, Food 101, on our third season with Chef Alessandro, one of the best executive chef in one of the five-star hotels in downtown Toronto. And plus one more, I'm inviting you to listen to my upcoming podcast this uh, June with one of the best comedian of all time, Mr. Mike Lucas. We titled it Comedy 101. 101 is empower writers all over the world. Comedy 101 empowers laughter, people. We need to laugh because laughter is the best medicine. Please do listen next month. Comedy 101. Miss Huckle, are you indie or traditional publishing? I have. My books are all indie. Okay, so what are the pros and cons of being indie author? The pros of indie are you have a lot more control. You know what's going on. You can see what's happening. I can go into my KDP report. That's the back door of Amazon. And I can see, like I can go in right now and I can see how many pages of Kindle Unlimited. I can see how many orders have happened. I can see all of it. Um, the con is I have to pay for everything up front. I am paying for everything. I have under my pen name, um, four books that are traditionally published. They make nothing compared to my indie books. I make a lot more as an indie author than a traditional author. Um, and I, once I have the bandwidth for it, once I have my, I am, I'm working on a few series, both under my name and under my pen names. Once I ha- get to the end of these series and all my books that I have written are published, I probably will pull my books from the traditional publisher and publish them as an indie author, because I think with the marketing, I can make a lot more money myself from them. And I have to market no matter what, like they don't do the marketing. So if I have to market the books myself, no matter what, I may as well get all of the royalties from it. I may as well get, I may as well do it all myself because that's how I'm going to make the money. They're not marketing and it doesn't, it's not cost effective for me to market the traditional, traditionally published books because I don't make enough from them. So at the end of the day, it just the indie published books make more sense to me. Unless you're with a really big publisher, which I don't know how anyone gets in with those, going indie is the best option. In my- yes. So what are your uh, inspiring message to those aspiring writers out there to want to publish their book? Um. You can do it. Write your book, get it edited, find a community. You can do it. It's all available. There are really nice people out there. Don't, uh, writing has traditionally been something more people think you go off by yourself and do it all alone, but don't. Find your community, find your people, and publish your book. Yes, go ahead, people. (laughs) <laughs> show your story because probably one of the best in the making as they said so miss Hako, what is your struggle in writing wolf healer um my <laughs> i didn't know how to write at the time if i look at my very first version um the struggle is just i write really fast i don't always put enough detail i skip words because i'm dyslexic I focus sometimes on the wrong thing and then I reread it and I'm like, oh, that was interesting. And then you go back and you clean it up and then you have good people. Like I said, you know, and then, and I I can't highlight their books enough. So Wes Immersek and their book that's out right now that you can get Shifted Fate under Parker Love excellent book. Uh, They're the best editor ever. And then uh, A.R. Grimes with Wildling Snare. Also, the two of them have made my books what they are today. 
they go through and take my ramblings and kick them into shape and make them these books that are amazing. But I've also learned from them. The first time they went through one of my books, it was not as like, I can write more cleanly now, but I still absolutely, I will always need them. I will, there will never be a day I don't need them because my dyslexic brain will never learn everything. And I will always need help with the detail. The two of them are like my secret weapon for being able to write books. So how did you cope up with your being dyslexic in a uh, classroom? Um, <laughs> diligence, hard work. I don't know. It's I, we all struggle and work through it. <laughs> <laughs> I salute you, Miss Hackle. So, despite of being dyslexic, you give this great books to read, and it's not only one; it's a series and more to come. Yes. And you said that you are also writing bromance. How did how did you come up with those uh, idea? I don't know. I just write what I want to read. And that's <laughs> that's always how I describe it. When I'm writing, I pretend I'm reading a book and I write what I want to be reading. Have you ever written, read a book and you think this is what should come next? <laughs> yes. And so that's yes. what I think, what I think should come next. Oh, you're a gardener, as they said. <laughs> Between gardener and architect. Uh, Miss Hako, can you please invite our listeners to buy all your books? Um, yeah, please do. I have this five books and the sixth one is coming out. They're all on Amazon. You can get the paperbacks other places. Um, so you can, they're all at like Barnes and Noble. You can request them at your library. The paperbacks are available anywhere. The eBooks are only on Amazon because they're on Kindle Unlimited. So you can find all of them there. And I would love for you to check them out. The first one is Wolf Healer. And from there you can find the rest, Epsilon, Alphas, uh, Trader, uh, Pack, and then the one coming out later this summer is Battlefield. Oh, wow. Let's support Miss Huckleberry Rar because the books are phenomenal. As we said, if it will become a series or a motion picture, hoping, right? Let's support uh -uh, her. Let's hope it. <laughs> Just like what is this wolf movie? So, uh, Twilight, right? And and thank you for empowering LGBTQ. Yeah, yeah. because because nowadays it's still there are a lot of people have the second thought that they are not welcome to the world. Come on, people. <laughs> Let's empower them because this is a uh, part of our society. It is, and it's important. And I like that it's not the main focus of the book, it's just there because that's what our world is. It's the backdrop. Yes, it is there, people. <laughs> it's a part of the society as a part of Miss Huckle book, The Jade Stone Chronicles. Okay, Miss Huckle, thank you so much for your time. All right, talk to you then. Bodycon people, see you soon.